Mention. Don't, don't forget to mention. Oh, is it on right now? It is on right now, documenting okay. every mellifluous word. The obligation <laughs> of talking about your background. My name is Harvey Greenwald, and I will start with where my background started. I was five years old, and my first day of kindergarten, I ran away from school. Two Irish policemen brought me back across Amsterdam Avenue and into the class where my hysterical mother couldn't believe that this child had disappeared in Upper Manhattan. Well, they never let me go to the bathroom alone again. <laughs> <laughs> that was where I started, and here I am, like a rocket in Carpellis. On the opposite side. On the 8, 7, 21. Okay. On the opposite yeah. side of the room. It's well, it's just, it's just, you make big steps when you cross the river, I'm sure. So anyway, without further blah blah, I'll read a few recent poems that didn't even get to the typewriter, I guess. And they are scratchy, and then I'll read some other ones that are fairly old. I hope I can read my own writing. I've found that that's been quite often a problem. Okay. <laughs> if you know what I mean. I'll be much louder because I've asked, can you hear me in the back row? Hey, okay. Okay, and the name of this poem is Which Play? Okay. Which play is it today? The child rolling marbles? Castles in the air for night's gallant adventure. Play it the role given, part. Everyday tasks, jobs, bills, make ends meet. A good man or not so good. When the curtain comes down to no applause, an empty theater. The joy at play on the instrument when the right chord is struck, her money of balance, wish to be there forever. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll move on to a little ditty. The word, the page, the stage. The word, the first, all spoken. Towers built, confusions and all. Read today's, the daily storm. High assumption far to fall. Listen close, the first is all. Now from various times, what's well, very interesting, I haven't read this in a long time, but this building, this building, Carpolis, where I should shout for the wooden dampening of the door and the chairs, but not the dampening of those who will listen, uh, I hope. Anyway, since I'm wearing my fish shirt and certain people pointed out, you must be a fisherman. <laughs> okay. Uh, actually, there are... Uh, this is of a... Tell that story, how that happened in the barber chair. This would be great. The wash? Tell the barber chair story. Well, well, I'm beginning to realize how I got here so fast. Anyway, <laughs> I was walking down St. Nicholas, or up the hill, and then down the hill on St. Nicholas Avenue to get a haircut. And I go to the barber shop, and there's the board stretched across the two arms. That's the way they cut children's hair. And I was sat down, and the man told me, hmm, get up. And he pulled the board out. So sit down again. And he pulled out the backrest, and my head just came above the back of the chair. And I said, man, I'm going to get a haircut without the board. I said, whoa, I'm going to witness every single hair he cuts and be here for this experience. And as I sat there, looking into the mirror, which was surrounded by bottles, bottles and bottles of all these different colored potions, the barber shop was a magical place where men who weren't getting drunk in the local bars would come and talk. And the chairs were made out of cast iron chrome and they looked like chariots. This was really a place of uh, unimaginable men 
having an exchange blew my mind as a kid even. And he starts cutting my hair and as I'm looking into the mirror and all the magical colored bottles and greens and reds and Brill cream and Ferris and you name it and all the aftershave lotions and all the razors and all the stuff. I'm listening and I'm looking in the mirror and all of a sudden I hear about trout fishing. And in back of me, sitting in a few chairs and one man standing, the man standing was Freddie Nua, a barber, in his white collared, it almost looked like a surgeon's outfit they wore with the comb and the scissor in his pocket. And Freddie Nua was Austrian and he had a saber scar from being in a dueling society. So this was the background of listening to these folks talk trout. Yeah, where are we going opening day? And Smitty sitting down. And the man they deferred to was a fellow about 6'2", with no neck, a cabbie's cap and Coke bottle glasses. And he's talking, well, I don't know, and they're saying, what about Brewster? What about Amawalk? What about the Titicus Outlet? East Branch of the Krill. And I'm going, wow, all these rivers and places. And I even wondered, what was a trout? I never saw a trout in my life, you know. And here they're talking and talking about, well, maybe we should go to the Sawmill River. This was long before they built the throughway. This is 1952. And I'm going, whoa, whoa, trout. And then before I knew it, the flava whipped the towel away from me, and my haircut was done. And I didn't pay any attention because I was into trout, trout fishing. What was trout? What was trout fishing? And I was dumbfounded. You know, I said, oh, how could I not have? Then I got up, got out of the chair, and I turned around to look at the three men. And I knew them, but just hello, goodbye on this hill where a thousand people lived in five and six story walk-ups. There was only one elevator building on the block. And I walked over to this guy, Charlie, who I came up to hear, because he was obvious the man, the man who knew. And it was terrifying, looking at this guy with no neck and these glasses. I want you to take me trout fishing. <laughs> and he looks down at me, and I was like, terrified. He goes like this with his finger. I'll make you my protege. Oh, God. Oh, wow. That's where it all began. Oh. Bravo. Bravo. Wow. Bravo. Read on, Mick Jeff. And it's still going, it's quite obvious. You know? <laughs> In fact, hi, Amona. I'll read something of a whole different nature, but I'll wait till everyone is not moving, including me. I'm not running away today. Although I'm thinking about it. <laughs> You've done it before. Oh, I hate it. Awesome. I've got legs, nice. honey. So read a few more. Uh, well, I'll read one that uh, still rings extremely strong to me. And everyone seems to have loved it. It's called The River. Okay. I shall eat this river as a sacrament. Over its rocks and hidden places, swirl and foam against wooden bank work, smooth out, then down over the lip and rush against sheer rock. Rapid turn, flatten out, catch my breath. In dark, watery holes, it is time to rise. With a bubble up, go toward the light, the armor shell in encumbrance now. Shed not to be worn again. The surface pierced upstream facing, shaking dry, loosened, translucent wings. I am eaten as a sacrament. Below the foam, moving highway beside the undercut stone, in world of light and shadows, flashing spots then, there, then not. Liquid apparitions facing upstream, breaking the surface to snatch translucent wings. Again, I eat the river. In my hands, this river, wet gems of brilliant color, in awe of this quivering body, humbled by the mystery. 
I eat this river as a sacrament. Okay. Now, hey, archaeology or Newburg? Read the, read the Newburg book. Read the Newburg book. I thought I was going to. I thought I was going to. Come on, Harvey. I know it's here because it's one of the few stapled together. I wish that could be said of Newburg. <laughs> well, actually, I can talk about it until I get the stapled copy which is probably where I already went over. Okay, that's the river. Obviously, that's a this isn't edited. Huh? Obviously, what did you say? This isn't edited. What a great story. Oh, I'm so glad I have that document. Mm -hmm. What a fact. Cathedral, mm -hmm. archaeology. Oh, oh here archaeology. we go. You got it. Newburn. Where this poem came from actually was the first time I came up here to read. And it was a wintry day, I believe. Yeah, it was definitely a wintry day. Of course, this is done in January. And what happened was, as we're talking, or reciting poetry, you hear these sirens rushing up the block every two minutes. I figured, you know, the people were killing each other, you know, trying to get into a restaurant or something. But in, or out of one. But, in, but anyway, I kept hearing it, and it stuck in my mind. So I got home, and the next day, I woke up very early in the morning, and I wrote this poem called Newburg, because I know a lot about the history of this place. It once was a leather manufacturing center in the whole United States. There were 36 factories here that produced personal leather goods, and they hired all the other people that are still here. They left, but the people couldn't, as you'll hear. Newburgh. In Newburgh, they go racing by the blast of sirens, speeding to destinations by those who are employed. Generations who have little work, the factories left, they didn't, waiting for the years of coming back. Top of the hill, Broadway to the river, wide with promise and burnt out dreams. Too many high roads to go down to waters, rivers, bays, and sounds. Wide broadways carry wooden blocks, chicken, eggs, milk, cream, food to feed and build cities. The Hudson Highway delivers up and down with the tide. <coughs> the trains came, the trucks, the factories, the people with hope to prosper. Some did. The river still flows up and down. The need to ride it slow to faster roads for delivery. The ferry to Beacon for workers who ride the rails to New York City, a faster road. From top of the hill to the river, the Neverleft scrambled to keep it together for the coming back. Sunday morning in Newburgh, in the churches, many prayers said in Spanish for the coming back. Silent, shattering sirens announce the racing to destination by those who are employed. That's it, folks. Thank you, Harvey. I, I just want to say that Harvey is my spiritual older brother, and he has a compilation called The Book of Harvey. Yes. It's about so thick with some of the most astounding poetry that you can imagine readable. And I highly, highly, highly recommend it. You can find it on Amazon if you wish. Yeah, yeah. To be continued. Well, it all started with running away from Kim